How did you know you and Andrew could laugh? I was just giving like the worst apologies ever. Yeah, well, they were just so fake. They were just like, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> felt like I was dissociating and I was. Mentally, it, my brain was like in a chokehold and it was like, tap out, bitch, tap out. As I'm like being strangled and choking, I'm supposed to do the deep inner work, you know? <laughs> and it was just like, what are your guys' favorite qualities about each other? Do you want to go first? Okay, Andrew. Hello, guys. It's been two years of me and Andrew's relationships. I feel like we've learned so much, especially this last year of living together in COVID and just going through a lot of different growing pains. So I thought it would be a great time to do a fun little relationship Q&A, family, friend, lover relationship. But first off, are you guys hungry? Are you hungry? I'm really hungry. Let's eat. While I show you these two super easy and delicious Chinese vegan recipes, I also wanted to take the time to thank today's sponsor, BetterHelp, since they've helped me so much with being reflective and patient within my own relationship. BetterHelp offers professional and secure counseling services online so you can skip the awkward wait rooms and find sessions that fit perfectly into your own schedule. They have a wide range of counselors with different specialties from couples therapy to individual help with stress and anxiety. Not only do they provide you with a quiz to pair you with the most fitting counselor, they also make it completely free to switch in between them if you'd like to try someone new. Their service is available worldwide in multiple different languages and they're more affordable than traditional counseling along with their financial aid options. If you'd like to try BetterHelp to move towards your personal or relationship goals, you can get 10% off your first month with the link down below. Casual eating, just like I eat every day. Ain't nothing to it. Mmm. It's good, eh? Mmm. Oh my god, it's so fresh. Mmm. 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 Mm. This morning, I asked you guys to submit relationship questions to us, and oh my god, within one minute, there were like so many questions, and you guys have really good questions too. For those of you who don't know us, hi, I'm Leah, and this is my partner, Andrew. We've been together for around two years now. <sighs> <laughs> I moved into this his apartment in last September. We met through our mutual friend Jen. Hey Jen. Tell him the story about how we met. I feel like we already told it in our last video, but we were in this neighborhood and you lived here as well as Grant because basically she had to use the washroom. Yeah, so I was just like, I'm just gonna ring the bell and then use this person's washroom. And then they all ended up coming upstairs and we all ended up hanging out and that's how we met. Literally walked into my life by accident. Yeah. Thanks to my bladder. <laughs> when you were both single, were you looking for a relationship or was it spontaneous? Mm. I was definitely not looking for a relationship at the time. I was like, I ended a relationship like half a year ago. I was kind of in this mindset of like, maybe open relationships are the way to go. We didn't have any expectations for what things were going to be. Basically. I think it was just supposed to be like a summer fling type yeah. of idea. Yeah. But then, but I think caught feels. neither of us are suited to that. Like every time I think, oh, it's gonna be a summer fling or some type of fling, it just ends up being a relationship because I don't think I can have a fling with someone that I don't even feel deeply connected to. Right. How do you deal with each other's annoying bad habits? <laughs> <laughs> I think patience is so important. Mm -hmm. I can speak well to this because I'm that impatient person, and I think if you are impatient, what helps is literally understanding why do you feel bothered by this we are talking about how we were raised mm. i was raised by a single mom i was an only child so if you imagine this type of environment it's like there's one authority figure anything she says goes mm -hmm. it's like a dictatorship yeah and i was i was raised in an environment where my parents never agreed on anything at all so, no one would ever hear anyone out so it'd always be someone talking over someone I think subconsciously, even though that's not the person I want to be, I kind of absorbed a bit of that. So when you're in a relationship and you're forced to live with someone, these kinds of things eventually will come out. So even if you're living alone and you feel like that's not an issue, it will show itself. And then so talking about that and understanding where it comes from will help you also become more self-aware. Mm -hmm. But I mean, at a certain point too, 
even if things irritate you, it's good to kind of bend a little bit for the other person because ultimately, like, what's more important is that you guys flatten out whatever issues you have instead of wanting to just be right all the time. And, and I think, have like, compromise. yeah, uncompromising. So checking your ego is really important, I think. Yeah, I read one girl's question was like, how much should you compromise with a partner? Mm. And I think in this circumstance, with dishes, for example. I'll do the dishes if it makes her happier, like, you know what I mean? But there's also times when you're really busy, yeah. and I see you left all these dishes, and I'm like, yeah. the past few days where that happens, I'm like, okay, I know Mishu's really busy, so I'm just gonna do the dishes for him. Yeah. I knew that I was gonna be in this like period of high stress, and, and I was gonna be really preoccupied with work, so we talked about it ahead of time. You did, you did such a good job of like, preemptively i just saw the storm coming of like okay i need to talk about this there are going to be some things that are going to irritate you and i just want to like address it and talk about it so we can kind of avoid them before they happen and then when they actually do happen we've talked about it so we already did a bit of the work beforehand and i think that actually really ended up helping for example I, when i take my adhd meds i really don't have an appetite at all and when i'm focusing on work and I get so sucked in, I really just don't have the, the state of mind or the the desire to cook at all. So I was like, okay, look, but we're going to have to cook in advance and we're going to have mm -hmm. to make big meals. And so let's figure out what we want to eat and yeah. let's figure out what we want to cook in bed. Andrew's like so high maintenance and he needs like a luxurious meal. Yeah. And you're just like, can you cook this luxury meal for me? And yeah. I'm like, no, I'm busy. I so don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking it's funny. It's for theatrical reasons. <laughs> You have that foresight to mm -hmm. say like, okay, let's plan our meal because I'm gonna be really, really busy and these, right. these are things that we've fought about in the past. So I think it's good about looking at what type of arguments you have yep. and not only apologizing when you know you act out of line, but also being like, what can we do in the future? Like, what can we do next time? So next question, is being too comfortable with your partner a bad thing? I think it can be. Yeah, I think, I think we're be. too comfortable around each other. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> it's because it's like, you also want to keep things sexy and keep things like fresh and it's difficult when you're like, literally- Farting on yourself. each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, if anyone has any tips and tricks for that, you can comment that down below. <laughs> when did you know that you were in love? I don't freaking remember. Do you remember? You can answer it. Yeah, I remember. Okay. It was when we, we would bike around the city a lot, and I would be biking behind her, and it just looked like a scene from a movie. And then I was like, wait, I'm catching feelings right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I felt but like. Were I'm... you falling for the aesthetic or were you falling no. for me? <laughs> no. It was... Oh, I know. What? I remember. What? This was really early on in the relationship, maybe like one or two months in. And I was like, I don't feel hurt by this person. And I felt like whenever you asked me questions about like my life, I would be like onto sentence number three and then you would say something to like, like tie it back to your life because you were trying to like relate to me but it felt like for me that you were just interrupting me and you didn't really want to hear what I really had to say. I remember we were in my room, or in the Madeline apartment, mm. we were sitting on the couch and I was telling you this, and I was like so nervous oh, to tell that. you. <laughs> After I told you, you were like, oh my god, I didn't know that's how you felt, like I feel so bad, mm. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to do better. And you were like, this is just how me and my friends talk, so it's really normal for us, so I didn't realize, and I was like, I was just like, oh my god, like you care about how I feel and you're gonna wanna do change and do better for me and I was just like, that's so I was like, I love you. Oh my god, you're so sweaty. <laughs> 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 We decided to come out and film because it was so hot inside, but it's actually hotter outside. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Is it important to like the same things? I think it's important to share common similarities that you can bond and chat and be excited about. We kind of bonded a bit over graphic design initially, and I think that kind of led us to talk to each other a bit more and kind of understand each other on a bit of a deeper level. As you stay together longer, you realize that there are a little bit of differences, but those differences actually keep it interesting and you can learn about each other in different ways. And it's good to have different insights and perspectives, especially if you're with someone for a longer period of time, I think, right? How did you know you and Andrew could last? Realistically, I don't think it's possible to really know if you or someone can last because the world and all of the things that happen to it, a lot of things are also out of your control. But I think I would say compared to 
previous relationships I have and just our interactions, I think we do have a very great chance of lasting. We com one, communicate really well. Two, we have traits that really help to balance each other. Like I said earlier, I think I tend to be more, maybe a bit more anxious and impatient. I'm, I like to flutter around, do this, do that. Like I really like to explore and Andrew's a bit more grounded and patient so i think it's a good balance because we bring out the best in each other and we're also really supportive of each other and we like seeing each other grow i think we help to assure each other and we don't constrain each other's growth like i think if one of us wanted to go somewhere else or do other things we don't we don't hold each other back mm -hmm. which is something that's really important for me to knowing if we will laugh do you ever feel like you overshare with Andrew? What is oversharing exactly in, in the context of a relationship? Being too comfortable? No, I is don't it... think it's bad to overshare. Sometimes I think you have to. I don't like it when you don't overshare with me. Mm. I'm very sensitive to other people's energies and I can tell if someone walks into the room and they're not feeling good and I ask them, hey, how are you? Is everything okay? And they say, I'm fine, but they're not fine. And then you have to just be around with them and they're fine but they're actually not fine stage and i don't know i think there's always like things that are going to be passive it's just going to feel off so i'd rather everyone just share about how they actually feel i think it's in the way how you share it. right yeah how will i finally find him with the like ooh woo emoji face um stop trying to focus on being happy doing things that you like taking yourself out improving <laughs> yeah there, there's a lot of virtue to trying not to try i think but i think there's also things that you can do if you're if you're in a time when you're like i really want um a relationship like make space in your life where someone could come in right because that's kind of like when i first met you in your apartment i would say there's a lot of space for me to be there when i came in and i felt really comfortable it wasn't a I go to some of my guy friends' house rooms and it's so messy and I'm like, <laughs> how do you bring girls home? Like, yeah. I would actually like throw up in my mouth. How do you get over a breakup when he says you're not compatible? I feel like I never feel sad when someone, oh, I mean, yeah, you feel sad because it's a breakup, but I wouldn't want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with me or doesn't think we're compatible because think about it. There's someone out there who you are compatible with. So if this person's like, we're not compatible, they'll be like, okay, thank you, next. How to stop viewing people as options slash backups in case current relationship fails. That's interesting. I feel like that's not too uncommon for people to feel that way. If there's like a time in your relationship or for us when things aren't going well, maybe those are the most times that you're susceptible to think about things like that. Think about backups, alternative options. If your current option, something's not so ideal. Oh, that was a huge spider. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Oh yeah, it's right there, it's right there. Oh, it's cute. And I think talking about it with your partner, talking about maybe things that you aren't satisfied with in the relationship, addressing those concerns, working on them, would probably also help you stop looking for alternatives because you are more happy with the person that you do have. And maybe if you're looking for alternatives all the time, maybe this person isn't the right person. Yeah, that's true. There's a question that comes up quite a bit about people who want to like learn how to make new friends if they're shy or something do you have any advice for those people go out and do things and just get off your phone get offline go into the real world or if you use your phone try to use your phone to find in-person experiences i think it always will be scary at the beginning but the thing is it's always that hedge that's the first step is always the hardest to make so once you just start getting into that little groove of it challenging yourself to do that it'll just get easier and easier every time and that goes with making new friends making new relationships everything have you ever felt any pressure before you met andrew with not having a boyfriend i feel like you need to enjoy the years where you're single enjoy being in touch with yourself and doing the things that you like because when you're in a relationship you need to tap into that energy to not feel overcommitted to someone or to still maintain your sense of self. Mm, yeah. So use those years, don't see them as a net negative. There are a lot of merits to being single too. Mm -hmm. Maybe eventually you'll wanna be with someone, but you might miss those years when you're in a relationship too. Like there's beauty to being able to have time for yourself, right? Also, take yourself on dates. Don't be afraid to go to the movies alone. Don't be afraid to take a course alone. Don't be afraid to ride your bike alone these things are important too any tips on how to have open communication with people mm, i think being vulnerable is really important 
And I think you can't expect other people to be vulnerable first. You have to be vulnerable yourself. Mm -hmm. Some people only open up when they see other people open up in front of them. Yeah, like model the type of behavior you would like from the person that you're seeing or from your friends. This wasp wants my boba. How does you two share financial costs or living costs? I've seen couples where they split everything absolutely 50-50. Like, they'll use like Splitwise or some apps for that, but... I think we just like I, casually split it. Yeah. If one person is doing well and gets a good project, we feel generous and <laughs> we yeah. take the other person out. <clears throat> what are your turn-ons, turn-offs in a guy, Mishu? Like friends? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like when people are too reserved. Like, just be who you are. Be comfortable. I was super reserved with the first day I met you, though. Yeah, and I could tell. And I had to crack her shell. And I was I, just, like, very not interested in interacting with you. But I knew that there was so much more to her. And so I studied her. That sounds creepy. It wasn't creepy. I just felt like there was more to you and that I feel like I wanted you to break out of your shell. Because I knew that there was a lovely little personality underneath. What are your turn on, turn on, turn offs in a guy? Um, I like guys that are kind to the people around them, like willing to be helpful to their friends. Turn offs, people who are judgmental of others. I don't like rainbow keyboards. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like you don't like douchey bros. I thought you were kind of bro-y, so that's why I didn't really want to interact with you. Yeah. But it Such was just the exterior. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love you. It's okay. I was being judgmental. It's okay. See, when you like criticize other people, things you don't like about other people, I feel like it's always a reflection on yourself and what you need to work on. The person in the relationship puts you first, is it bad? I think people should always put themselves first in that they should be doing things that make them happy, sharing how they feel, but I don't think putting yourself first equals being selfish or mean. Does that make sense? That makes I feel sense. like if I'm not a good whole person then i can't be good to other people mm. you know if mm -hmm. i'm like anxious annoyed scared then i'm gonna give off that energy to other people so if i like you know make sure i'm doing all of my self-care things i think it's all holistic like we're all so connected taking care of the people you love is you know part of taking care of yourself because this is a person you spend all your time with anyway so yeah 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 exactly that's a good way to put it so what do you do when the other person is in a bad mood and vice versa? And then communication slash fighting slash tough days, your guys' experiences. What do you do when a person in a bad mood? I go, hey Mishu, what's wrong? Are you okay? I've noticed you've been a little bit extra sassy with me today. Is everything all right? <laughs> and then you go. <laughs> when someone's not being open, that it's also like a coping mechanism, right? Like we're all just trying to cope and yeah. live. So I think understanding that for each other is really important in arguments and understanding when the other person's feeling down, how you can help them to open up more. And I think reminding each other like, hey, we're in a good relationship. I never hold your feelings against you. So please share them with me. Like opening that space for other people is really important. Hmm. Do you remember that incident last week where we were fighting? I'm trying to remember what the trigger was where you almost went to go sleep in the other room. Oh, Do you remember what that yes, was? I remember. You hurt my feelings yeah, and you wouldn't did I, apologize. What did I do? And I had a really hard time apologize. talking and apologizing. Yeah, because yeah, I felt like, oh, I remember. And it was something like, I felt like you weren't hearing me out, but you wanted me to apologize. And I, I think it was just like, my okay, ego you, you feel like I'm not hearing you out because I'll say, hey, you did this and it hurt my feelings. And he'll start saying, listing the reasons why he did that like why he might have been giving me a lot of attitude and sass like right. i was stressed i've been caught up on this this that and when i'm like hey but i'm sad and someone else is just being like well i did this kind of rude thing to you because of this is this is like what the heck like i'm sad i'm hurt in my heart and you're not even trying to comfort me i'm like i feel like very invalidated when you're just it feels like you're excusing yourself instead of saying like, hey, I'm sorry for hurting your feelings. Yeah. And I think, and then you felt like I wasn't hearing you out. Yeah, I had to check myself. It was really weird. Like I, it was like a moment where I knew I wasn't being self-aware. Cause it's happened multiple yeah, times. Yeah, and, and, then, and then she, she wanted me to apologize or I felt like I had to make her stop feeling hurt. 
but I wasn't in the state of mind to be able to recognize exactly what I was doing wrong. And so I was just giving like the worst apologies ever. Yeah, well, they were just so fake. They were just like, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I think what was going through my mind in that situation was like, I needed some time. Because I, I feel like in these kinds of situations, I need to cool off and then think about what happened. And then I can come back to it with like a more mature perspective. And I think I wasn't communicating that I needed that time to process it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to fix the situation immediately, but there was actually no way that I could fix it immediately in that mindset, in that mindset because I couldn't do the work to, to really like dig in inside me and understand why I was being like that. So I think that's a really good example of like a fight that we had that we ended up talking about it and we understood each other a lot better after that. To be honest, what hurts me most is not that you were sassing me. It hurts me more that when I tell you I'm hurt, you kind of just emotionally shut off. Like you become this person that is not empathetic, not sensing how I feel. Like you just go so poker face yeah. that I'm like, it feels like a stranger. Cause I know in a regular day to day situation, if I got hurt, if someone hurt me, you would be like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm sorry, blah, blah. But in that situation, I feel like you kind of just like shut off to become this like robot. steel robot. Yeah. yeah. And obviously to me, I feel very neglected and sad. And you saw, you felt like I was dissociating and I was like, I was literally like, like tapping out, oh, yeah. you know, like <laughs> mentally my brain was like in a chokehold and it was like, tap out, bitch, tap out. <laughs> <laughs> and then like as I'm like being strangled and choking like I'm supposed to do the like mental deep inner work you know <laughs> and it was just like it's funny to think about it in retrospect now but at the moment it felt like so dramatic <laughs> and, yeah like, yeah and you came out and you're like you know you can't always expect me to be sensitive like you you know how to share your emotions say how you need to feel but that's not me I'm not sensitive like that and that's when I was like crying and I was like you are sensitive, Mishu. That's the <laughs> thing. You are sensitive. Don't let them tell you that. And then end credits and then the movie ends there and then we smooch. Just be like, hey, I love you. I just need some time to think about it so I can be a better person, give you a better response yeah. and work and be better next yeah. time. Or if you're fighting and if you feel like the tension's rising, just leave the room, come back later. You know, go on a walk or something. How did you guys confess your love for each other? I kind of want to talk about this because it was pretty funny. Like there were many situations that summer where I met Leah where we would be like cuddling and she'd be like, I like, I like you wanted to say something and you were so like, you know, constipated and like clogged up. You couldn't say I never say said I love you for the first time to a partner. I feel like it's always the guy that always says it first. And she would say things like, you know, we'd be saying goodbye and she's like, um, I want to say something. And then like, she would say, ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> like, I don't remember Yeah, that. I remember that. And then eventually, I eventually, said it. yeah, okay, eventually Leah I fucking said it. Yeah, eventually she said it. We were at the apartment. It was a sunny day. We came back from a date and we were like half naked listening to music. We felt really emotional. And you're I like, I want to tell you something. Yeah, you were. Was that? We were on the, Is remember? that a detail we need to share with people? She was fully clothed, guys. <laughs> About jealousy. Have we ever been in a jealous situation? I think we're both pretty confident in our relationship. Do you guys fart in front of each other? All the Absolutely. Time. Does Andrew mind you having old vids with your ex on your channel? No, it's part of who she is. And I don't... I'm not afraid of her talking about her exes like she's had great experiences with them and that's part of life you know honestly i've never like watched a full video but like her I exes think sound you, cool we'd probably I be think friends you would get along with my yeah exes. it's like you know i don't know i like my exes i think they're all good people how do you know you're ready to date again if you're asking the question maybe you're not ready <laughs> i don't know is it normal to be awkward at first not sex but in general, especially if you're both shy, yeah, yeah, embrace it. <laughs> There's like, like funny things that happen that are awkward in the moment, but they're like really hilarious when you look back on it. Yeah, I think like people that feel like afraid of being awkward, it's like you're afraid of being judged by another person. Like, if someone's being really judgmental makes you feel uncomfortable, like maybe that's not the right person. It's not the vibe, you know. What kind of person do you want to see yourself with? Like visualize that. How do they treat you? How do they make you feel? What do you do when you lost the only friend you have? Oh, I'm sorry Aww. to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. That's tough. What happened? You can talk about it. You can send us a message. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Is there someone in your family like that you can talk about it with, a teacher? Do you think dating apps are not organic? I've personally never been on a dating app and I have this weird um, 
feeling of like, I don't feel like I need it. And maybe it's an ego thing, but I prefer to just have like a natural story where I meet someone like serendipitously, like how Leah came to use the washroom, <laughs> you know? Like obviously I got lucky in that regard, but I don't know. There's also nothing wrong with dating apps if that's how you choose to meet people. I mean, that's kind of the way that the world is headed right now. But also just don't be afraid to try and walk up to somebody in public and be like, hey, you look really cool or like it's cool to meet people naturally you know mm -hmm. i feel like it's more romantic when you have a cool genuine story i like talking to strangers i feel like when a stranger talks to me it kind of makes me it kind of makes my day better this random dude in the subway who's just like oh. i guess you could think of someone as looking sketchy if you expect the worst out of everyone but he was just like i love your hair like purple is my favorite color and i was like ah oh, thanks <laughs> and then i parted ways but you're like Oh, that was like a nice friendly interaction and i think you can be able to do that with people around you if you see someone you're like whoa that's such a cool shirt like speak your mind thoughts out loud yeah challenge yourself to try that today yeah, guys just compliment someone just like yeah. hey i really like this this that mm -hmm. you don't have to do it with the intention of like wanting something from someone just no. be genuine and throw yourself out there it's fun you know i think it always will be scary at the beginning but the thing is it's always that hedge that's the first step is always the hardest to make so once you just start getting into that little groove of it challenging yourself to do that it'll just get easier and easier every time and that goes with making new friends making new relationships everything advice of letting go of a friendship you've outgrown because i feel like i've been in that position like i had like my group of like stoner friends in high school or whatever and i just realized that they just got so lame and all they would do is just like get together to smoke weed and it was like you know these people don't inspire me they don't bring the best out of me so i think gradually i would just stop making an effort to hang out with them and i feel like you should just do that um and if ever they are like yo like what's up you never hang out with us anymore you just honestly just be truthful if you really don't feel like they're okay you don't have to straight up tell them that you can just say like <laughs> hey i haven't been feel i just been feeling like i need some more time to reflect and work on myself yeah which is true too don't don't be afraid to cut ties my mom always told me you are the product of the close, the five closest people in your life. So surround yourself with good people. If you don't have those people in your life at the moment, it could be people that you watch, people that you read their books. I think I watched a lot of YouTube when I was younger, also in university. Even now, I like to watch people that inspire me, that I want to embrace the qualities of. And I think that's really helpful. Do you guys still get butterflies with each other? <laughs> you still get butterflies? When I come home and you clean the whole house and all the dishes are put away and it <laughs> smells like yummy incense and I just see you just stretching being such a good little bear I feel butterflies What about you? You feel butterflies? I still feel butterflies I think there's moments where I look at you and I'm like God damn, I'm so in love You know? But it doesn't have to be all the time, like those butterflies aren't forever, embrace them in the early stages too, you know? I think the factors that give you butterflies will change through each stage of your life. What are your thoughts on media and entertainment creating false expectations of love? What are my thoughts on it? Bad. If anything, maybe media just gives us a, the idea that relationships have to be perfect or that they're really easy and that you don't have to put work through it because I think relationships are definitely a lot of work a lot of emotional labor that you put into it and a lot of patience why do you call each other mishu i looked it up and it said it meant secretary <laughs> mishu m-i-s-i-u is in polish little bear and andrew is of polish heritage and that's what he started calling me and we just end up calling each other mishu bear but then i made the account Mishu Bear to put my drawings M-I-S-U-B-E-A-R because we thought it was spelt like that but then our Polish viewers corrected us yeah. thanks guys how to shoot my shot that doesn't make him feel annoyed fam I feel like it should be subtle just ask them to do something fun together like it doesn't have to be obvious just like if you guys both like a certain type of movies or galleries or some type of concerts events just go invite this person on a one-on-one -on -one. If they're not comfortable with it, maybe they like invite more friends every time you do that, then you can just take the hint. Yeah. I don't think it has to be like, do you like me? Do you want to date me? Tell me now. Only if Jonathan can come. <laughs> what are your guys' favorite qualities about each other? 
Do you want to go first? Okay, Andrew. <laughs> I like that he is very patient, that he's very humorous. He never takes things too seriously, which I like is a good balance for me. I like that you're really hardworking. I think your stubbornness can be helpful in certain ways because it makes you more committed. Whereas I feel like I'm a bit more airy. You're funny, you make me laugh. What I like about you is how in touch with your emotions you are. I like how much time you take to, to learn about yourself and how you're always trying to grow and how you always try to bring out the best in me too. And you always look out for ways that we can improve together as a team. And I really like how responsible you are and how um, goal-driven you are. And I love how loving and caring you are. And I love how sensitive you are and how you cry at silly things and you know, like you get like an emotional breakdown at the bubble tea shop because you're not sure what flavor you should get. <laughs> like it's these things that make life so much more interesting and entertaining. And normally that would irritate me, but for some reason with you, I'm just like so into it. And I love that you have that like <laughs> inconsistency. Chaotic. Maybe it's because I feel like I'm really stable, but that chaos, like I love that you bring that into this house. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Just you trying to work and be like, hey, you want to go on a walk? Yeah. Or, hey, you want to eat something? <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying to do something and like I'm so focused and she just like, hey, she's like a cat hey. that sits on your keyboard, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or I just say, fuck off, don't pet me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I also love that you are so curious about things. You're like always watching different YouTube videos and tutorials and podcasts and you always have new facts to spit out <laughs> about like capitalism or <laughs> the environment and you always watch really good cooking videos so you're always like trying different recipes from around the world i think that's really awesome about you that you're super open-minded yeah. that you're really friendly and easy to get along with like you're very good natured you're like a golden retriever yeah. everyone loves you you're very good natured too and you always look for the best traits in people and i think you always think you think you you want, you think, you you know, you want, you, you, you think. How do I deal with a mom who I sometimes feel takes away autonomy from my body? She will make me cover up in front of certain people and forbid me from wearing certain things to the point where I feel uncomfortable and over-sexual within my body. Do I continuously rebel against her, which is sometimes emotionally draining, or just dress as she asks you to? Mm. I think these situations are hard because our parents had this whole lot other life before they had us they had their own experiences their own trauma if you try to think about maybe what type of environment did your mother grow up in did she ever feel like people were sexualizing her body and is she telling you this as a way to protect you from feeling that way but then somehow it's backfiring i think honestly whenever i have these things with my mom not this particular circumstance issues where you have disagreements yeah disagreements or things where i've reflected that it's like okay we just had very different realities and the, she treated me this way thinking this but in reality it's affecting me in this way a lot of times it's cultural differences like me and my mom growing up in totally different countries there's a lot of things that we don't see eye to eye on but i think talking about it is really really helpful try to voice this concern doesn't have to be in a way that's attacking her just be like hey mom i know you want me to dress in these certain ways because you want to protect me you want me to you know not be seen in these, these ways for my own good but in like this is how it actually makes me feel and i know you don't mean to do it but this is how i actually feel you know maybe we can find a middle ground mm. I what think if they say, like, I'm the parent, you have to listen to me. Because there are parents who are like that. Yeah, I know. There are parents who are not willing to talk about it. Depending on how strict my parents are and what the repercussions are, if they're super strict, I would probably just dress the way that they are okay with. And then when you get older, you'll have more control over your life. But I still think really try talking is the best way to sort it out. If your parents are super against it, it can just take time for them to warm up to it. But I think you making that step to be open and vulnerable about your feelings is setting a good foundation. Yeah. And maybe in the future, if they don't warm up to it the first time, maybe they will in the future, you know? Yeah. Y'all getting married. <laughs> I don't know. Keep 
following the channel you guys might see that happen one day on the channel you know i don't know how should a relationship serve you what is the meaning of being in a romantic relationship i don't think it's that deep it's just to have partnership and a companion i think it can be that deep i don't think it's that deep <laughs> It's not is, that deep. This is why we're good. I think we balance each other out. <laughs> Me taking overthinking everything and you're like, it's not that deep. Life is not so We're just serious. having fun. Just but be yeah. with someone who makes life more enjoyable. To me, that's all it is. You enhance my life and we have more fun when we're together. We enhance each other's life. Yes. Is Andrew an introvert? I, I do identify as an introvert because I don't like spending too much time socially with people. Like if I hang mm. out with a group of friends, I need time by myself or with Leah just to like calm down and relax and get the energy back. Uh-oh. Ooh. Uh-oh. Ooh. Does Andrew have any single friends just as nice as him? Please tell me. Oh, Paul is looking for love. So if you're a Pisces shorty, slide through at Paul Drafts if you're a cute Pisces from Montreal. <laughs> How'd you get rid of any lingering sexual energy that ties you to someone in the past? Some type of ritual, I would assume. I have not experienced ritual. it. Ritual? I think a good old ritual with some candles and <laughs> moonlight and something very symbolic to you. Yeah, you need an exorcism. Yes. <laughs> Do you recommend moving in with your boyfriend, Lamau? Uh, yeah, if you're meant to be, you should be okay to live together. No. And it's better to find out sooner if rather than later. Be, if you're both willing to put in the work and solve problems that arise, if you want a good learning experience that has frustration but also joy, do it. Like, if it wasn't meant to be, you learn something from it. If it was meant to be, you'll still live together. So either way, it's a win-win. What do boys think about a girl who confesses to him first? Boys love it. Trust me. Just do it. True. If a girl is confident enough to do that, that's a big turn on. And... I think the guy would be very into it. How long were you dating before you moved in together? We were dating for about a year. But most of it was long distance. Yeah, I'd say half of it was long distance. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with different sex drive in relationships? I think it comes and goes in phases. Like your sex drive naturally will come and go and there's going to be periods in the relationship where it's more intense and periods where it's less intense. How do you deal with it? Just talk about it. Like I think recently you were bringing that up with me a lot and there was like a kind of a traumatic experience that I had that I didn't even realize was traumatic, but it definitely had a huge, huge impact on my sex drive. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would have even realized it if Andrew hadn't, you know, asked me continuously, brought it up a few times. Mm -hmm. Cause I was just like trying to get it out of the way. Like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. But then I was like, yeah, you were it. trying to dismiss it. Yeah, I, I was think. being very dismissive. And then I think one time you really sat down with me and wanted me to talk about it. And I think you were very caring and it just made me feel safer to talk about it. And yeah, so I think once you both are on the same page, then it's much easier to deal with because you have a genuine understanding of why someone may have a higher or lower sex drive. And there's a wasp in my jelly. Someone said, what's something that we wouldn't guess about you? Me? Mm-hmm. Maybe how anxious you get. I feel like you don't really look that anxious in your videos. Oh, but even my friends are like, you were anxious? Like, <laughs> like when I see Anna, she, I was like, yeah, I've been having a rough couple of weeks or I've been feeling anxious lately. And she's like, you're anxious? Like, I can't tell that you're anxious. I'm like, well, because I'm anxious, I'm like being anxious by myself, like in my home not leaving how to get over the feeling that you'll never experience a real love again i promise you you will i promise you i thought that once too and then look what popped up over here a even beautiful or and better and bigger butter love it was so great for you guys to join us i hope you guys learned a thing or two i felt like i was just rambling but it was fun yeah it was fun rambling on this hill with you i hope you guys enjoyed it maybe we'll do it again sometime who knows let Bye. us know if you guys enjoy the filming style too, because I thought it was fun. Yeah, do you like these family videos or are you like, hey, shut up already? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Love you.